Welcome to Film Companion South. While reviewing a film like RRR, one needs to walk the talk very carefully. Because after a string of massive box office hits, expectations from director Raja Mauli are very, very high. And especially when he steers his vision this time towards India's freedom struggle. And with a special focus on extremist freedom fighters. That's not a very comfortable area, by the way. Appropriately, however, the film is released on the week they celebrate Martyr's Day, March 22nd, the day when Bhagat Singh was hanged. Known for his mythological bent of mind towards storytelling, we can see Raja Mauli here struggling somehow to blend history and mythology. The historian mind focuses on accurate details like costumes, locations, the kind of cars, the guns, while the mythological frame of mind is always trying to see how we can visualize this in epic proportions, grand. At that level, and within the Indian cinema context, full marks to RRR. Because the film really grows larger than life and some splendid cinematography by Sendil Kumar, the film reaches another level of visualization. But mythology can function only when the core emotions are clearly sketched. For example, in the Ramayana, you know the core emotions of Rama and how he is so dedicated to monogamy and having to fight Ravana. They are all very clear. Without explaining the story of RRR as such, let me try to convey some of the problems we encounter in this narration. Aptly called Raudra, Ranam, Ratham. Anger and rage dominate the emotional mindscape here. And to make this possible, it is very important to lay the motivational foundation for the two primary characters. Alluri Sita Ramaraju, played by Ram Charan, Komaram Bhimu, played by NTR Jr. While Alluri Sita Ramaraju takes on a negative character to fulfill his dead father's wishes, Bhimu is a self-styled savior come hitman emerging from the Gond tribes to somehow get back a girl who has been kidnapped. So for most of the first 90 minutes, it is all about these two prancing and dancing. And for another half of that, they are fighting with each other, showing off their very masculine skills. The context for the comic escapades and these fearsome fights are very sketchy, but submerged under this spectacular visualization and some solid color schemes. Even when it comes to the second half, it takes a good 30 minutes for these two primary characters to really understand each other and why they are there in this story. And these things happen largely by statements made by secondary characters. So, having understood each other, the film now delves into full-scale mythology, where Rama Raju is seen as Lord Rama, and Bhimu is a very powerful, tough man, kicks up a motorcycle and virtually launches himself into the ammunition depot on top of the British quarters. So what we clearly understand here is that the emotion of Raudra or anger is transformed into a giant circus, a massive spectacle, because that is the only way that their lethal murderous activities can be softened and diluted. In fact, in one particular scene, Bhimu enters in a big truck, opens it up and it is all lions and tigers and antelopes, everything run helter-skelter into a British party. And especially when it comes down to our own Indian anti-colonial history, you don't want to end up giving lessons in how to stage violence. And therefore, this dilution and glamorization becomes necessary to talk about violence. By the way, this cinematic attitude is across the world. Even the best anger films in Hollywood, like Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, all packed with fantastic stunt scenes and make you forget that these are actually lethal activities. Back to RRR. I did feel bad that the film did not attempt to really go beyond appealing to the audiences of Andhra and Telangana. You know, we have some excellent non-Telugu artists like Alia Bhatt, Ajay Devgan, Shriya Saran, Samudra Kani, and they actually make very little impact in this film. There is another long scene in the film in which Ramu is seen flogging Bhimu in front of a massive public. And at that moment, Bhimu suddenly bursts out into a very old 60s style song talking about valor and courage and how we should rise up. I've never seen this for a long time on Indian screen. The staging of the romance between Bhimu and the white high class young woman is often quite embarrassing. And with strong hatred that we see in other scenes of the British for the Indian natives, 
I cannot understand how these two young brown natives walked into an all white dance party dressed up in suits dance along with them and even teach them how to do a kutu party we are all supposed to be excusing in terms of fun and frolic but then it loses the core drama and its emotion no one is of course supposed to question the illogicality of our mainstream cinema but why is there so little interest among actually making historical films in india why do we always want to fictionalize history in ways that it becomes impossible to actually understand what was indian history and on the other hand we have very complicated problems when we deal with extremist stories because we have always been told that indian freedom struggle has always been done by the moderates people like gandhi nehru sardar patel maulana azad these were the people who championed the cause and quietly we have left behind all these extremists despite that we have a few films made on bhagat singh so we had manoj kumar playing bhagat singh then it came to sonu sood and then it comes to bobby deol then it comes to ajay devgan and even there is a small little staging of a bhagat singh sequence in a film like rang de basanti in the regional landscapes however it's quite sad we have very very little films to actually talk about this period of indian history it's a very expensive affair to actually stage historical films but then with the coming up of so many ott platforms we are seeing a growing rise in indian history anyway i strongly feel that with benchmarks like ashutosh gowarikar's lagan and richard attenborough's gandhi it's a tough task to follow up when you watch those films and when we watch rrr it needs a very stiff comparison with all the hurdles in the following up of these films towards making decently historical films i can confidently tell that rrr rests very strongly on the shoulders of ram charan and nt ramarao junior they have put up a very convincing and very sincere performance committed to their characters and for their sake it is worth watching the film